in the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. I don't need to be the greatest. I want to be faithful. Will you say that with me? I don't need to be the greatest. I want to be faithful. That's what this gospel is about. Let's take a look at it. It's an important point in the life between the disciples and Jesus because, um, as you know, uh, many of the disciples were fishermen or one was a tax collector, but they were doing their business. They were going about their daily work, and in one way or another, Jesus came to them or through a brother and said, follow me. And what each of those 12 did is that they turned away from their daily life and chose to follow Jesus a life-transforming decision on their part. It was a quick decision according to Scripture, but one to which they stuck and were faithful the rest of their lives. But at this point, it gets a little confusing. I mean, again, those disciples had been with Jesus for a long time, and they had, they had learned a lot from Him. They had watched and heard Him teach and preach and heal, and their lives literally had been changed. Um, and you get the feeling that they could have continued doing that forever. Again, change, leaving their family, their homes, following Jesus around. But he, here's where it starts to change. Because Jesus is telling them what's going to happen. He's trying to tell them that he's going to die. And after three days, he will rise again. But they don't get it. They don't want to hear it. Instead, they're arguing about who's the greatest. And now, now, that's classic. I mean, when somebody's giving you information that's hard to understand or some maybe information you don't want to hear, let's argue about something that really doesn't mean much. And that's what they were doing. What do you mean, Jesus, that you're going to die? Don't tell me that. Don't go there. But Jesus knew that he had to prepare them for this event to come. So they argued about who's the greatest, as if Jesus cared. Jesus knew that something was up. He could tell that they were arguing. Number one, they weren't really paying attention or responding to what he was saying. But he could tell that something was going on. So when they got to the house and went inside, um, he sat down. That, that's the... That's the act that says, I'm the teacher here. Gather around me, I'm going to teach you. He sat down. And he said, what were you arguing about? And they said, we were arguing about who's the greatest. And don't you know that his heart fell at that moment? Why? Think about all the times we've been together and the events that have happened and the things that we have shared why are you going there, arguing about who's the greatest? Now, a little aside, it's just fine to decide who can develop, who can use their skills best. That's, that's okay, because that's information about how that person might make a difference in the world. It's okay to say, well, um, so-and-so, I think you've got this fantastic gift, and I think you can use it even better. You know, that's okay. That's encouraging people to develop the skills that they have been given by God. But to say, um, I'm greater than you, that's talking about the essence of a person, and quite frankly, that's prejudiced. That's prideful. That's sinful. Because in God's eyes, we all are great and good. So why would you argue about who's the greatest? Well, regrettably, it's sort of human nature. I mean, it still goes on today, right? And in fact, I can even sense it in myself. I can sense a little dark angel right here saying, Randolph, you're a whole lot better than those people right over there. Or a whole lot better than them. Or, I'm unworthy because they're so great. 
If we really believe that God through Jesus Christ loves us, we don't go there because we know that we're good and that everybody's good. And yet here are these disciples arguing about who's the greatest. And you know, maybe they got the point that Jesus getting, is getting ready to leave us and let's, uh, let's decide who's going to be the number one of those who are remaining. Whatever. The point is that they were called by Jesus to follow him, and they did faithfully. And now at this critical point, they weren't quite on target, on the path. They were not really walking with Jesus at that moment. In the Episcopal Church, we are encouraged by our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, to participate in something called the Way of Love. And it's, it's happening all over the Episcopal Church. And we're doing it right here. And I've talked about it before. I'm going to talk about it some more. Because it's about the same thing. And it's really funny. Well, not funny, but it's a, it's a holy um, coincidence that... Um, what we're talking about in class after church, after this liturgy, we right there in the reception room, please join us. We did it earlier after the eight o'clock. What we're talking about now is turn. See, in the course we, talk, we look at these practices that lead us to a more Jesus-focused life. Turn to Jesus, learn, pray, everything we can do daily, worship, that's what we're doing right now, bless, uh, say that God is present in this and in all people. Go cross barriers to bring all kinds of people together and rest, rest in God's Sabbath. So we go through all of those practices and see how can we be more active in each one of those areas. And the one we're focused on today is turn. Well, that's what the disciples did and what they had trouble doing in this gospel reading. So in this Episcopal program, we are encouraged, which I'm doing with you right now, to think about how can you more easily, more spontaneously, more authentically turn to Jesus again and again throughout the day. And that's the question that every disciple, follower of Jesus, every Christian needs to live with throughout the day. In some way that's manageable, because the problem is, just like with these disciples in this story, there are times during the day when we have sinful thoughts, or just say thoughts off the path of Jesus. There are times when we do have prejudiced thoughts, or dark thoughts, or mean thoughts. I mean, it just happens. That's a part of human nature. And the question for us Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, is what do we do? Well, what this story says, and what our faith says, is that we turn to Jesus again and again. It's got to be in a way that comes easy and natural because it's something that we need to do many times during the day. And it really makes a difference. Let me share one way that's classic. It's called the Jesus Prayer. And the point is this, is that, is that when, I, when I feel that I have looked at someone and, wait a minute, I've got to share something. Is anybody here from Maryland? Are you all from Maryland? Well, see, I lived in D.C. for a while, and then in Virginia. I think Maryland drivers are crazy. <laughs> of course, they think, Virginia, they think Virginia drivers are crazy. But anyways, I mean, sometimes I really have yelled at a Maryland driver on my 495 around, you know? So whatever, whatever, you know, things that we don't like or something different, what's going on? I mean, I have had thoughts, prejudiced thoughts, and where'd that come from, And and, and really, if I can say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. I mean, it sounds sort of churchy, 
But really, if it's something, if I just remind myself that I have chosen to follow Jesus and what I just did or thought, it was not a Jesus act. If I just can remind myself of that, it makes a difference. Because I feel better about myself having confessed it to God and said, I will, be, I will do something different. Turning to Jesus, listening, I mean, pausing and then listening and then turning intentionally is just like pouring water gently on a flower so that it blooms. We've got to do it. We've just got to do it. And the catch for most of us is how can we do it in a way that doesn't feel so big? That's, that's, what, that's the point I'm trying to get across. Um, will you say after me? I don't need to be the greatest. I want to be faithful. That might be what you say. Because usually when we say something that's sinful, it's coming from some place of pride, like we're the greatest. So maybe you say that when you catch yourself getting off the path. I don't need to be the greatest. I want to be faithful. Faithful like those disciples who made mistakes, but faithful like those disciples. And faithful like all of us gathered here this morning. With open hearts and open souls to receive the love of Christ. So that we can share it when we walk out of this building. Amen.